planet heading our way. Yeah, um, and you know, one of the theories about that Planet X is that it comes around, its orbit puts it close to us every 3,600 years or so, and who's to say now, in one of those orbits, when it got close in the past several millennia, that it was a little bit closer than it should have been, or it got moved a little closer with some gravity with other planets or whatever, and like you said, it might have wiped the atmosphere and most of what was going on there on Mars clear off of it. I think that could be plausible. Well, I mean, why not? Well, that's a good possibility. You know, a fortune teller who uses asparagus. That's right, asparagus, to predict the future. <laughs> I've never heard tell of using um, vegetables to predict the future. I've heard tell of using tea leaves and all kinds of different things, but why not? I wish I'd like to see how that works. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, would, yeah, I don't know about that one. I it's still, you know, fortune tellers and mediums and stuff like that. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, early men, early humans, they well interbred multiple times during their life. <laughs> Sounds like a wrong turn somewhere, but yeah, okay. So, so um, early man. Uh huh. They they started inbreeding, and so that well, they are because I mean, where else were they going to find women? Yeah, I, so I, that I, caused some kind of genetic defect somewhere. Well, Absolutely. maybe it created us. Could we be the uh, <laughs> the offshoot of uh, interbreeding? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a very plausible theory, but yeah, maybe uh, we were actually very smarter and very more uh, uh, genetically toned. And after inbreeding, it kind of dummied us down. I can see that happening. I mean, it's plausible. But um, that's one of the theories with some of the three-toed uh, Bigfoots out there, I think, is because of some inbreeding. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, headless chicken. Now, this is, remember the story years ago that one was <laughs> in the circus, a guy cut that chicken's head off. It didn't die. And the yeah. farmer, you know, fed the uh, chicken uh, with tweezers and eyedropper. And went on to be uh, in a circus for a year before it actually choked to death on a uh, corn uh, kernel. Well, now in the UK, there's another headless chicken. It's still standing a week after its head was decapitated. And it's adopted by a vet who feeds it now through the neck with uh, a pair of tweezers and an eyedropper. Oh, wow. that is bizarre. You know, just to see in the sight of of something like that would it would just be bizarre. I wouldn't even know how to take something like that. You know, uh, yeah, I remember the one you're talking about years ago. I think it lived for yeah, well over a year, and so now we got um, another one. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's a weird reason why beer bottles have always been green and not brown, or green and brown, and never clear. I can figure that out. Can you? Well, I would think it would have to do something with keeping the beer either cold or fresh or both. Well, the beer would go bad if it was in a clear bottle. Yeah, that's what I figured. Now, you know, there is some beer in clear bottles. I, well, I won't mention the name of them, but I, um, I remember as a kid, while well, they probably changed it now, but it was one of them light beers there. But it used to be in a clear bottle, and it, well, it tastes like crap anyway. But, <laughs> but that makes sense to me. Oh, yeah. Well, the, in uh, well, the Philippines, they find a big uh, fish. They bring it to shore, and when they slice it open, they find a bottle with a message that is over 100 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, some fish will eat anything, I'll tell you, but that goes to show you, you know, them bottles that don't get eaten or broke at last 100 years or 50 years or, or however long. That's amazing. I wonder what the letter said. I, I, I'm curious about that, too. <laughs> well, uh, who knows? Maybe somebody was on a deserted island and yeah. was writing a letter like, hey, get me off. Or he was writing a love letter to somebody, you know, because he's been, you know, marooned on an Mar island. And he, he put this message in, and he thought somebody would find the bottle. Well, somebody did. It was a big fish. It, it somehow swallowed it. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. I've seen some of them big, um, the giant groupers down there in Florida 
I've seen people on videos are fishing, they catch other fish, and, and they'll just come up and swallow. Their mouths are so big, they just swallow a big old fish. So a bottle, and, you know, tiger sharks, too, them things, they're called the garbage cans of the ocean. They'll eat anything. They found all kinds of bottles and license plates, you name it, in their guts. Yeah. And then human bones, too. A Florida, oh, yeah. yeah, Florida may, a mayor pardons a pig ahead of time of Christmas feast. <laughs> Say, wait, my, you broke up. Say that again. What do you do? A Florida mayor pardons pigs ahead of Christmas feast. <laughs> okay, now I got you. Oh, he's doing the old pardon the turkey, but this time it's the old pigs. Uh, you know, um, geez, people in Texas wouldn't like that. I'll tell you that. Uh, there's all kind of feral pigs out there tearing things up. And now he's pardonable. I guess it's a domestic one, so people won't eat them. But um, I like my ham. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> After what you told me about, you know, pork, I, you know, my wife loves buying pork because, you know, we're kind of a little bit on a budget. And you can always get pork cheap compared to, you know, you're getting a T-bone steak, for example. But after what you told me, I just haven't had the desire to eat ham or pork or anything. But I'm sure after it's been processed the way they process hams, that nothing could survive on that one. Yeah, plus, I mean, if you you, you bake it and cook it properly, you, you've got nothing to worry about anyway. I, you know, the one thing I very rarely eat, and I eat pork all the time, and the one thing I rarely eat is chicken, because I'm going to tell you something. You think pork's bad, chicken will eat anything. You just think about that for a minute. <laughs> I just had KFC tonight for dinner. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? I just finished the mashed potatoes before we went on the air. Uh, well, the potatoes are good. Now, I just know I do eat chicken maybe twice, three times a year, but not very often because I, I know what they eat. And, um, <laughs> you know, there's an old saying you are what you eat. <laughs> oh, come on. You don't, you don't, okay. Let's be honest, James. You you don't want to eat anything, okay? You don't no. want to eat canned food. You don't want no. to eat frozen food. You don't want to uh-huh. eat chicken. You really don't want to eat beef. Uh, I mean, because beef will cause you to have cancer, so you want to eliminate that. Uh, you know, you don't want to eat Chinese food because I hear that the actual, <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to go into that. What can you eat? Well, I can tell you what you eat. Go eat an apple off a tree, eat a pear, eat some strawberries, and eat some peas and corn. Hey, there you go. Yeah, and you know, there's these fast food places that uh, all the time I see these commercials. It's made out of plants. It's, we, we got this burger that, that tastes like plants. Well, you know, cows have been making burgers taste like plants for a long time. They've been eating plants a long time and making them taste like beef. Why change it? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not for that either. I think that's even worse than than real beef, in my opinion. Know. I tasted, and I'm not mentioning the chain, but I tasted one of these meatless burgers that everybody was standing in line to get. <laughs> and I'll oh, be what? honest with you, the bun tasted better than the, the patty. Yeah, you know, listen, any kind of meat or food that has to be processed and chemically changed to to another form to look or taste like something else, that's bad because the stuff they use to do that, those agents right there can cause you cancer or any all, all kind of bad things. Yeah, well, I one of the companies back a few years ago had a meatless patty, but do you know what they were making it the taste? They were using like beef extract to you know into their patty to give it that meat taste oh lord so you just... maybe you weren't eating meat but you were eating meat juice mixed in with your patty. <laughs> i don't know a man catches 67 tennis balls in 30 seconds while bouncing on a board well that's one talented guy right there with a blindfolded too my goodness wow that so that had to be another guinness record set right there i bet surely oh yeah and a venomous snake was found hiding in somebody's shoes inside the home. Oh. So it, I am so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't say somebody's toilet, Jesus. But yeah, you got to watch shoes. I mean, I'm telling you what, some places in this country, or not so much in the U.S., maybe down south, but uh, your shoes, you got to watch for. You got to shake them out for spiders and snakes, and even uh, baby snakes that are poisonous. They're just as poisonous as, as the uh, parents. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I still, 
you know, I have the scar from years ago, bitten, you know, I was bitten by a brown recruit, which almost killed me. But, uh, yeah, you got in that, those spiders are so small. But, you know, about a year ago, it, it, during the night, some spider must have creeped down from our headboard and bit me. And I'll tell you what, it was horrible. Yeah, listen, some spider bites are just bad as snake bites. I mean, uh, the poisons or antitoxins, whatever that some of them got, they kill your tissue. Or And some people got to have amputations or you plain die. I mean, it's all bad. It's You know, there's a show on TV where these guys get stung and bit by poison stuff every once a week. And, I, man, they get bit by some of the stuff that I, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with them. They do it on purpose for science, and it's like, the pain they go through is just mind-boggling. Oh, yeah. And, well, uh, animal rescuers trap a cowboy pigeon in Las Vegas. Remember, it was somebody had, it was uh, going around about a week ago about all these homing pigeons that had cowboy hats attached to their head. Oh, yeah, that was all over the place. They had the little uh, cowboy hats on them. They was all over Vegas. And somebody had uh, really put some time and effort in it. Well, you must have been homing pigeons, like you say, but, yeah. A little bit of super glue on a little miniature hat on a pigeon. Ugh. That's horrible to super glue it on your heads. I didn't think about that. I just thought it kind of went on a rubber band or something, but wow. Well, that'd be just as bad on a pigeon putting a rubber band around its head to hold a hat. It Come would. on, James. It would. But at least it wouldn't take its feather and skin off when the hat comes off. That's terrible. Yeah, but it would cut the circulation off. The next thing you know, the head would fall off the pigeon. Well, that's true. Then we'd have to feed it with tweezers like that chicken. I guess so. Well, in Missouri, in a town of Missouri, they attempt to make the world's largest dessert ever. Oh, boy. I wonder what kind of dessert it was and how big it's going to be. Because I, I have seen some of the pictures of these records, Gary. Some of them's bigger than a house. Now, this is a cupcake. I'm, I'm oh. You know, and they figure it's going to feast at least 1,800 people. I, you know, I'm ready to go there. That's a huge cupcake to feed 1,800 people. Holy cow, I wonder what it weighs. I have no idea. A monkey on the loose in an English town. Could you imagine this monkey is going around and, you know, going up to people's, you know, whatever, and stealing stuff and running away. <laughs> and it's not a tame monkey. Oh, Lord, them's the worst kind. It's one of them feral monkeys. It's it's came probably escape somewhere because obviously if it's in the uk they don't have native monkeys and i i've seen monkeys in india they come into the markets and steal everybody's um produce from the uh, flea market and stuff and run off but monkeys are thieves you know they used to you know they used to catch monkeys are so greedy they put a little fruit in a, in a can and when they stick their hand in they make the fist to grab the fruit and they're so greedy they won't let go of, the, of that fruit and the, the can would be you know tied down to the ground they'd be stuck there because they would never let go of the fruit they'd be so greedy yeah i wouldn't doubt it anyway we got a couple people on chat here tonight we got Kristen on there and uh well i don't see karen tonight but uh i don't know we got some great shows here tonight don't we we got a great desk uh daryl uh marson coming on and then we have another person after him well let's see who it is Ah, oh, Lyle Blackburn. Yeah, I was going to say that. I just had a forgot where my mouse. I got five mouses in front of me to run these computers, and I forgot the one over. I haven't moved it over where it should be yet. It's still sitting way over there. So I got to fix that problem tomorrow. Yeah, you need to get three more arms so you can run them all at once. My goodness, I don't know how you do it, buddy. Well, my son was in here helping me, you know, install this mo other monitor above the other monitors, and he goes, "How do you do this?" How can you multitask with five computers all going different things all at the same time? And I go, I don't know. It just comes natural, kind of. That's what I've been asking you a long time. Like, because I've seen how you got it. Used to, well, I used to have it set up, and, and I was like, how do you do that? You got eyes in the back of your head, or how many arms you got going on there? <laughs> it's it's amazing. Oh, too many. Boy, the, the half an hour almost is up here for the first half an hour of the show. I can't wait, uh, you know, uh, till we get our guests on. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about ghost hunting. And then after that, 
uh, Lyle is going to be talking about, you know, monsters, cryptics, and stuff like that. And, and talk about his also his new book. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, Daryl, he's, um, I think he's on the, the show Ghost Hunters. 